So what, I, what I'll say is what I already said is that um, you know, we believe he moved her body in those early morning hours, and all that is, is still under investigation. Sheriff, do we believe that, that, I know that you're piecing things together with different portions of video, is it, is it the department's belief that she was killed at the house? It's, it's our belief that she was killed in Kissimmee and, and that he moved her body. And so that's why the Kissimmee Police Department is the lead investiga investigators now. As for messages that... What's up, Mob Crew? I'm Chris, and welcome. Today's short video is an update on the Madeline Soto case. I now have the unredacted version of the PC affidavit. In it, gives us another little timeline piece that we didn't have before, which is very interesting and does kind of suggest it's quite possible that Stefan Stearns dropped her body off early that morning somewhere else, possibly nearby the school, picked her up, and then brought her back. We will go over that and more in today's video. Welcome back to the channel, everybody, where we cover true crime, mystery to the missing. If you are new to the Madeline Soto case, please check out this video at the top right hand corner to get caught up. Okay, so today's video, we are going over some new information and going over the timeline in chronological order. So we know that Madeline Soto had a birthday party the night before on Sunday, February 25th. We heard that supposedly she went straight to bed after her birthday party. And we know that the mother had worked late that night. We're not sure what time she came home. And we know that Stefan Stearns was there at the birthday party. Then at some point during the middle of the night or early that morning, sadly, Madeline Soto was attacked and killed by Stefan Stearns. But what we don't know is did it happen in the home or did it happen somewhere else? So we have the first piece of timeline information, which is at 7.35 a.m. Stefan Stearns is seen discarding items in a dumpster at their condo complex at Kissimmee. He is discarding Madeline Soto's backpack and school laptop. It's unclear if there was other items that he discarded. But the new information that we didn't have before because the affidavit was redacted is very interesting because it says that a license plate reader captured Stephen's vehicle driving away from the school at 8.10 a.m. That's right, 8.10 a.m. He told them that he was dropping her off at 8.40 a.m. And the school doesn't start until 9.30 a.m. So why would he be driving away from the school at 8.10 a.m.? So that means that photo seen here is him driving away at, from the school at 8.10 a.m. And what's even more shocking is he had her body in that car because he is now driving back and the, the timeline makes sense for the next piece of information that we had. Because at 8.19 a.m., video evidence shows that Stefan Stearns was returning to the complex. And Madeline's body was visible in that vehicle. And that makes sense from 8.10 to 8.19. It's about anywhere from a 15 to 20 minute drive depending on traffic from the school to the home. So that means that this picture here that was shown to the public, he had her body in it. So this begs the question, did he pretend to drop her off at 8 a.m. in the morning, a whole hour and a half before school had even started? Or did he drop her body off sometime in the early morning hours or late evening somewhere around the school came back home 
Then at 7.35, he discarded some of her items. Then left shortly after that. And then went and picked up her body. And then was seen driving back. Back to the condos. And was caught on camera at 8.19, arriving at the complex. And then it's unclear what happened after that. And I believe that could be due to that there are two entrances to the condos. There's the main entrance and then there's the rear entrance. What's interesting about the rear entrance is it shows on Google Maps that there are cameras at the rear entrance. So it's quite possible that there may be cameras on one entrance, the rear entrance, but maybe no cameras on the main entrance. I don't know for sure. But it seems like there is some gaps when it comes to where they know Stefan Stearns was. But there's only two scenarios that could play out here. Either her body was at the home the entire time and was killed at the home and then he started discarding items at 7.35 a.m. And then pretended to drop her off at 8 a.m. Which seems really odd. A whole hour and a half before school started. It doesn't really make sense. And then he came back at 8.19. Back to the complex with her body. Why wouldn't he just go dump her body after that? It almost seems like he knew where some of these cameras were and was trying to make it look like she was in the car with him at certain times and wanted to be seen on a certain camera with her in his vehicle. Is it, is it the department's belief that she was killed at the house? It's, it's our belief that she was killed in Kissimmee and, and that he moved her body. And so that's why the Kissimmee Police Department. I don't know if this piece to the puzzle adds more clarity or even more confusion on what Stefan Stearns was doing with her body in the early morning hours and what actually happened to her. As of making this video, there has been no major updates other than this. Um, but as soon as more information comes out, I will do another update video. I do thank you everybody for watching the video. Uh, please like, subscribe, and Consider supporting this channel by becoming a member or a Patreon. And thank you guys so much for watching.